How we did? How we doing today? Man, I'll tell you, baptism is one of my favorite Sundays. We do it maybe three, four times a year. And I'm going to let you know, this morning in so many different ways has been so chaotic. You don't know because you just came in, right? But man, I'm telling you, whenever that happens, it's just like I know God is going to do something amazing. And I am so excited, you know, just to be able to celebrate with those who are identifying with what they've already done in their faith, right? Right? And this message today is one one subject that means so much to me. I'm so thankful to be able to share it with you today. And there's a lot to it. We won't be able to get to everything. But I'm just excited about it. Because we're in this series right now called Wholeness. And uh, the first week, David started out saying, man, really the foundation of wholeness is peace, right? Right? It's the peace that we get from a relationship with Jesus Christ. If we've trusted him as our savior, we have what the Bible calls this shalom peace, which is wholeness, which is where this whole series comes from. And everything else kind of rests upon that wholeness. We even had the idea of a wall, right? That there's a wall, there's no gaps in the wall. It's a load-bearing wall and it's like, that's our life. And so it's whole. And yet, it doesn't always feel that way, right? Because we live in a world that's broken. And so, week one was about peace, the wholeness that comes from uh, living in harmony with God and his purposes. Then last week, we talked about the gospel transforming our spiritual self, our spiritual minds. That we're made righteous before God because of Jesus. One of my favorite concepts is that if you know Jesus... You are righteous. People who are in the church that struggle with legalism or struggle with control say, no, 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 you're righteous if you do certain things. But the Bible says that your spirit is made right because of what Jesus did, not because of what you do. Amen? You you following me here? I don't know if y'all are following me here because I need a couple more grunts coming at me here. But it's the idea that you are righteous because of who Jesus is and what he's done. And then there's the process of trusting him day by day and surrender. The Bible calls that sanctification, right? Where day by day we're giving ourselves over to him. But we are truly righteous because of Jesus. We're known by God. We're empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we have a responsibility to live out the gospel. Amen? And that was last week, man. So these first two weeks, go back and catch it if you haven't. This week, we're talking about how the gospel transforms our mind. As we get started, a few things that I want us to remember. I... I love an area of neuroscience, this Christian neuroscience, that really focuses on how the brain works. And if you really get into the neuroscience of actually how the brain works, it is a beautiful, beautiful picture of God's love and creativity, right? It's the most uh, amazing organ that we have in our body is our brains, and everything flows in our life through our minds, right? Through our thoughts, through our brains. And we're not gonna get into the organ of the brain, but man, if you ever wanna do that and just go down a rabbit hole, it's absolutely amazing. The prefrontal cortex is where we rationalize from, where we talk, where we communicate. There's parts of our brains that receive information from others and also we can receive from God in that. There's parts of our brain that that handle trauma or handle like if we're in fight or flight or fawn or all these different modes. And all of that comes through our brains, right? And it's a beautiful thing. And the Bible uses the word mind. The Bible talks about how our minds can be transformed by the gospel. So I want us to start off with a few things that are true about it. Our minds are a gift from God. We have to understand that. Our minds are a gift from God. The Bible says, I'll praise you because I have been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous. I know this very well, that your mind is a gift from God. He made it, and it's beautiful. He created us and gave us the capacity to think, to feel, to imagine, to reason, to have preferences, to create art. And all of this comes through the mind. They're gifts of God to us through our, our, our minds. You, you following me here? And, and so the second idea is that it's not only a gift 
uh, from God, but we're created in the image of God. So our minds are a gift from him, but we're created in his image. First Corinthians, the first part of the verse says, for who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him? Meaning that God has a mind. He has thoughts. He has feelings. He has imagination. He has creativity. The Bible says his ways are, are higher than our ways. And yet, he's, he's made a way for us to understand some things. We can't understand the ways of God fully, but some things we can. We can see that we think and God thinks. We feel and God feels. We have like a, imagination and creativity and all these things, and they, that's because God has that. If you look around, this world is God's creativity. It's God's imagination. He said, huh, I want to make a, a world and a universe and place us in it. And he did it. That's imagination. That's creativity. So it's a gift. We're created in his image. And the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. That same verse, the end of it says, for who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. And this is where we're going to sit today, that we literally have the mind of Christ who know Jesus, who have that peace. If we have that peace and we have Jesus and we've been made righteous from the inside out, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And just to get us on the, like the same idea of what we're talking about with mind, right? We use the word mind in so many different ways, like uh, mind your business, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, we use this word in a lot of different ways. It's like, man, I, it's like, mind is one of these words that is pulled in so many different directions. It's kind of like when I say, I love pizza and I like pizza. It's like, we use all these different words interchangeably in our culture. And so just to get us on the same page, the mind by Webster's Dictionary is defined as the part of a person that feels, perceives, thinks, wills, and especially reasons. And the Bible says that our mind is the mind of Christ. Our mind is transformed by the gospel that we're made whole and given peace. And yet our thoughts are not peaceful. And yet our minds are not at rest in the knowledge of being righteous. Anxiety runs rampant in our culture. Depression is common. Mental disorders affect millions of Americans every single year, not to mention how many people suffer in the world, in their thoughts, in their minds, in their inner person, who they are on the inside, what they think of themselves, how they feel about themselves, the things that have happened and how they handle it. Some mental health stats from uh, NAMI.org one in five U.S. adults experience mental illness every single year. One in 20 adults experience serious mental illness every single year. One in six youth aged 6 to 17 experience a mental health disorder every single year. And listen to this stat right here. Kind of This stat blew my mind. 50% of all lifetime mental illness begins by the age of 14. 75% by the age of 24. Meaning the way we handle our kids, the way they develop, the way we as parents or we as church leaders or we as social leaders handle these different things or protect or do all these different things for these kids matters so much. And you know this because you remember when you were a kid and something that happened to you that threw you off and you didn't know how to handle it and you felt either alone and you didn't know what happened and now you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever and you wake up at night with anxiety from what happened and it's real. The second leading cause of death among children is suicide, ages 10 to 14. Anxiety and depression lead the pack in mental health issues that so many people face, me included. It's hard. Life can be hard. Our brains play tricks on us so often. I wanted to make a distinction here because there's a huge stigma around what I'm saying right, right, right now. And you probably feel it or you've thought it or you've heard it. The difference between mental health and mental illness. So let's talk about this for a second. 
Mental health includes your overall well-being. Everyone in here has mental health. It's good, bad, or mid, right? You know, it's like we're all somewhere on this spectrum of our mental health, and it probably flows back and forth depending on what's happened. You lose a job, you know, guess what? Your mental health is not probably that great, how you cope with things, right? So mental health is this idea how you handle your social, emotional, and psychological well-being, how you handle your life, how you interact with others, and your capacity to cope with life is your mental health. Now, mental illness is different. Mental illness is highly distressing changes in your thinkings and your emotions or your behavior that affects your ability to live your life. It affects your ability to have relationships or to manage your emotions. These illnesses are diagnosable and they last for a specific amount of time. There's a difference, right? You can have poor mental health and not have a mental illness or not have a disorder. You can struggle with depression for a season and not have a major depressive disorder. You can struggle with worry and it not be generalized anxiety disorder. But if you do struggle with these disorders and more, you are not alone. Did you hear me on that? Because I think sometimes when we're struggling to the, to the nth degree on different things, we feel like we're the only one. But if you look up mental health stats, trust me, you're not alone. There are 297 diagnosable mental disorders in the DSM-5. And there's way more that we can't diagnose because we don't really have words for it yet. Every single time they do a revision of the DSM-5 or the ICD-9, they are always are extra, always new things coming into it, always changes. And I'm here to say that it's okay to struggle. Amen? Amen? Maybe you came in today and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting through how the gospel transforms our mind and it's a mental health message. Oh my goodness. It's okay to struggle. It's okay. The Bible says that it's okay. I've told you these things so that you may have peace because you will have suffering in this world. But be courageous, courageous because I have conquered the world. So no matter where you're at in your mind and no matter where you're at in your mental health, no matter where you're at in your thinking, the Bible says we can have peace in Jesus. Guess what? It's probably gonna be a struggle. I, I used to say this a long time ago. I, my, my life kind of fell apart in about 2016. And man, it's like, feeling anxiety and depression and anger and all these things that I, I was kind of a numb emotional person prior to that. I just kind of went through life and everything was okay and I had a reason and a thought. I was able to explain away everything. And finally, it's like this idea that we have to just give over and that it was a struggle to have peace. And then finally, I regained some semblance of peace in my life and I would tell people, I'm not giving this peace up. <laughs> not for you. I worked hard for it, and you ain't taking it, so see ya, <laughs> right? It's, it's that idea of peace is a struggle, and that's okay. So no matter where you're at, we can have peace in Jesus, and there is a huge stigma around mental health. There's a huge stigma. So I've been a pastor for like 25 years now, and so when I would walk up to people and tell them I'm a pastor, they change. They quit cussing. They like, oh, well, I, I went to church uh, in uh, two, 2018, or I, oh, I go down to First Baptist, or I do this over at First Methodist. It always changes, right? You talk to a pastor, you feel that way. You feel the need to be like, oh, here's my spiritual life, right? But now I've just gotten a degree in clinical mental health counseling from Liberty. So if I tell them I'm a counselor, oh my gosh, that's even worse. They're like, don't work your counseling magic on me, okay? Don't look at me this way. I've got a koozie at, at, at home that uh, I'll turn around and it says, keep talking, I'm diagnosing you, right? <laughs> That's the stigma. We're afraid someone's gonna think we're not perfect. We're, we think someone's gonna know that we struggle and judge us because we don't realize that they struggle too. 
we don't realize that they're in the same boat as us, right? So we try to hide, like David said last week, we try to mask ourselves and mental health and counseling and all these things. There's a huge stigma around it. And you may ask this question, how can I have peace in my mind from Jesus? I want it. I'm a believer and I'm struggling. How can I have peace in my mind? And it's so easy to say, well, then just take it. Oh, it's annoying. And so it's this idea, how can you truly have peace? Well, I'm gonna give you a few really clear ways that you could. One is get a good Christian counselor. I know it costs money. But a good Christian counselor, let me tell you what they do. A good Christian counselor can help you truly understand your identity in Jesus. That is the core idea of a believer. If you truly understand that you're a son or daughter of Jesus, if you truly understand that you're made righteous in your spirit and you're working out your salvation, if you truly understand that you're a co-heir with Christ, that you're made new from the inside out, guess what? You will begin to believe it and you will begin to live that way and a good Christian counselor can help to lead that and listen and talk through that. But maybe that's not your step. Maybe you need a good licensed counselor. And there is a difference between Christian counseling and licensed counseling. Licensed counseling can help you work through behaviors, can help you work through thoughts, chemical imbalances, and medication needs. And I'm gonna say this right now, just plain and clear. It is not a sin to take medication if you need it. Amen? Amen. That's an amen point because someone in here feels like if they take medication, they're, they're sinning or pushing against God. And I'm gonna tell you, that is not the truth. If you have a medical professional and also your doctor saying, hey, this could help you balance out so that you can live life again and then de decide later on, hey, I'll try to get off of it or maybe you'll be on it the rest of your life. That's okay. A good licensed counselor can help you with those things and navigating that through your life and it's a good place to share your craziest thoughts because we all got crazy thoughts inside of our minds we get them out and they don't hold us a good christian counselor a, a good licensed counselor and i understand this man that costs money and not everybody's got it it's hard and not every Situation in life calls for the same mental health resource, right? So there's this idea of sub support groups. There's a support group for almost anything in life. Grief, addiction, shopping, loneliness. There is a support group for everything. One of my favorite Christian support groups is Celebrate Recovery. And there's two here local. There's one in Locust Grove and there's one over in Covington. And this idea that you can come and struggle as a Christian and everybody struggles. Just not everybody is brave enough to say I'm struggling and then have the accountability and the love and the care with another person. Finding good, safe friends that you can share your thoughts with. Even church small groups. I've had conversations with people that, man, you just go home after work and don't talk to another soul until the next day. They go home on Friday and they don't say another word to another person until Monday morning. And even a church small group can help us feel like we're not alone and start sharing those things and, and moving in that way. The Bible says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's this idea of peace again, that we have the mind of Jesus and we can literally cast our cares on who Jesus is and find rest. And it's a struggle to get there and that's okay. If you have the app, we created a mental health resource page that has all these things on there and a couple different counseling places and celebrate recoveries on there and a couple different books that might be good to read i want to encourage you over this next four or five weeks think about your your mental health in this way think about how the gospel is changing your mind and the things of that nature so it's on the app i want to encourage you in that because the idea being that the gospel transforms our minds one of the coolest verses in the entire Bible 
it's not my favorite verse, but it's probably the one that I turn to the most when I'm talking to people, is Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. <clears throat> we can change our life by changing the way we think. And, and this, is a, this is a concept. It is uh, technically it's cognitive behavioral therapy, but the Bible did it first, <laughs> which is so amazing to me. But it's this idea that our lives can change. The Holy Spirit empowers us to point our thoughts towards Jesus. Renew our minds towards Jesus. The New Living Translation says it a little different. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We have the mind of Christ and Jesus is literally the foundation of our minds, of our mental health, of our spiritual health, our emotional health, our physical health, our social health, all these things. Jesus is the foundation of that. He's that load-bearing wall that can handle anything that, that we throw at him. And we can view our thoughts through the truth of the gospel. An another favorite verse, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any moral excellence, or there's anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Meaning, point your thoughts towards truth. Renew your mind towards truth. Think about the things that are good, honorable. Think about the truth of the, the gospel. And here's a hot take. We shouldn't believe everything we think. Man, if you Google that, should I believe every, everything I think? A myriad of books pop up and ideas pop up. Don't believe everything you think, the lies we tell ourselves. All these ideas that you can literally believe something that's not true and your whole life will point in a direction that is not true. Amen? That's so tough, man. It's like we're sitting there saying, God, why are bad things happening? Why are these things happening? And we believe things that aren't true that can lead us in a way and God's saying, hey, you don't have to be caught up in legalism. The truth that you can believe is that you're made righteous. And stop there. Okay, I'm righteous now. And then let God change you as you move and as you go. This idea we shouldn't believe everything we think, that the Bible's giving us truth, Man, the Bible gives us ways to live. It gives us the attributes of God. It gives us sound doctrine to help us navigate how this world is so changing and culture is so changing and so many different ideas are changing. But if you look at the Bible, certain things stay the same. The truth of the gospel, who we are in Christ stays the same and we can live according to that. And you might be sitting here thinking, well, I'm good here. I don't have wrong thinkings when it comes to God. I believe in the Bible, so I'm good. I trust in his word. Cool, cool. What do you think about yourself? Are you thinking I'm not good enough? I'm not lovable? What are you thinking about other people? Are you thinking, okay, my race is better than another race? My politics are better than another politics? My sex is better than another sex. This ideas, these different thoughts that come at us and we take some of them and we believe some of these things that then point our lives in certain directions and it gets really, really difficult to sort things out. Like, are we living in a reaction to trauma that we experienced when we were a kid but we never faced it? Something happens in your life and we automatically react like we did when we were 14. And I've been there, and it shocked me that, man, I thought I was like a 20, I've been a pastor for 20 years, and when craziness happens, I, I thought and I felt and I acted just like I did when I was 14, because I'd never actually addressed anything in those years. So are we living in those things? Do we think those are true? Do we follow those things? 
And it's so hard to sort out what we think and what we believe. And man, it gets really taxing (laughs) to really stop and figure that out. And you kind of just got to let God lead you as you go in those things. And man, looking at mental health, there were so many, so many things that I wanted to jump into here, like how to sharpen your mental capacities, like how to be able to like read more and learn more and grow more, like the stewardship of our minds, like God's given us this gift and we give it back to him as a stewardship and a gift back to him and we live for him, we share art for him and be creative in his name and and love people in his name and do things of, of that nature. But the foundation truly, the simple truth from today's message that just to whittle it all down because there's so much coming at you is that our minds are transformed by the gospel a simple truth that we can believe now maybe you're sitting there and you go I don't know how my mind is going to be transformed I struggle with sin every single day I struggle with pain every single day I struggle with anger over my coworkers, they make me mad every single day and I want to just walk out. I struggle with my family. They run over me. They don't listen to me. Nobody seems to care for me every single day. I struggle. I struggle. And it's going to be a struggle. For our, our minds to be transformed, it's okay that it's a struggle. I'm going to get you guys to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to ask you a few questions. And um, The idea being that our minds are transformed by Jesus. Simple first question. And this is your first time here. Nothing weird has happened. I have the band coming up and we, we have our uh, prayer team that will be down here in just a minute. But I get you to bow your heads and close your eyes just to help reflect for a second. First reflection question is, do I believe my mind is changed by the gospel of Jesus? Do I still think, okay, I'm just living my own life and I give God what I want to give him and I give my family what I want to give them and I handle things the way I want to handle it. And are we believing things that aren't true about ourselves? And I'm just going to run through some thoughts. I just wrote down some different things that are not true that people believe all the time. And maybe this is you. Do you believe I'm dumb? Do you believe God will never use me? Do you believe I'm not good enough? Do you believe I'm broken? Do you believe no one will ever want me if they really knew me? Do you believe you can't trust others? Or I need a person to fulfill me because I'm not fully whole myself. Or the rules don't apply to me. I can do whatever I want. Or I don't have control of myself. I do what I do and then afterwards I feel bad about it. Or I am only what other people think of me. All these different lies that come into our minds and the Bible says you can transform your life by changing the way you think you have the mind of Christ now you have a righteous spirit that we can lean on and listen to to guide us and empower us am I renewing my mind daily you can look up at me Um, maybe you're here today for the baptism of a family member or just happens to be one of your first few times or you've been here forever I want to say it's okay to struggle but The whole point of this whole series with wholeness is that we rest upon the peace that Jesus gives us by a relationship with him. 
it truly is the foundation. It's the wall that we can count on to hold us up. And so if you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you to do one of a couple things. One is there's a code on the uh, a QR code on the chair in front of you. You can let us know if you want to have that conversation or if you made that decision. We also have a team down here that would love to just pray with you and answer any questions that you have on that. And for the rest of us, maybe the question is, do I have a stigma around mental health? Do I have a stigma around the idea, what if somebody asked me, hey, do you go to a counselor? How do I feel about that? Do I feel like they're saying something about me? Do I feel like, okay, no, I don't need a counselor. Other people need a counselor. Or, no, I don't need uh, this encouragement. I don't need small groups. I don't need other people in that same way. And the idea being, how can we as Christians support others in their mental wholeness? How can we be a part of their healing journey when they're struggling or when you're struggling so that they can move closer to Jesus in those times? I'm going to pray for us, and right after that, we have uh, three responses that we have if this is your first time. We have communion down here, which is for people who know Jesus as their Savior to remember his sacrifice on the cross and the gospel, the beauty of that, that prayer. And then also, if you follow Jesus, we talked about that. So you guys stand with me, and I'll, I'll pray for us. Jesus, we thank you so much for your your goodness around a subject that's a little bit difficult to talk about. <laughs> you know, how our, our minds work and and you've given us the gift of this mind and then also the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us to be transformed as we renew it daily, as we point it towards what's good and true and noble and honorable and how our life literally changes when we can figure out what lies we're believing and start believing the truth of who you are and what the Bible says and the truth of who you've made us to be. And Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory. You are so good. You are so kind. <laughs>